Hello everyone, welcome to my next lesson on practical coastal navigation. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These navigation videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can take the place of accredited courses from qualified instructors and developing your own navigation skills over time. You are responsible for choosing destinations and cruising areas that are within your own level of experience and ability. Any charts you may see in this video are not for navigation purposes. They may be out of date and they are for explanation purposes only. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. This lesson is about Mercator projections, what they are and why do we use them. All maps and nautical charts use projections because maps are flat sheets, but the Earth is a sphere. And sorry to all you Flat Earth Society folks, it's impossible to draw a map or a chart without using some sort of an algorithm to project locations from the spherical surface of the Earth onto a flat sheet. Probably the most useful projection invented for navigation is called the Mercator Projection. It was invented by an Italian, Gerardus Mercator, who was famous for having mapped the world in the 1500s. Let's jump right in and see what it is. Here is a cylinder of paper wrapped around the Earth. It's touching at the equator. Let's say it's a transparent sheet. One type of algorithm to project locations from the Earth onto the sheet is by looking through this transparent sheet at an angle perpendicular to the sheet down to the Earth's surface. Then, draw exactly what you see from the surface of the Earth onto the sheet. Then you move your viewpoint continuously around the Earth, always looking perpendicular through the sheet, and always drawing onto the sheet whatever you see there from the Earth's surface. Of course, that's not how it's done. It's a calculated algorithm, but that's effectively what the algorithm does. If we then unroll this cylindrical sheet out flat like this, we have a flat chart. And because we rotated our viewpoint around the Earth, always looking straight perpendicularly through the sheet directly down onto the Earth, then the lines of longitude will appear as straight lines from the bottom of the sheet to the top, like this. That's the Mercator projection. Every time you look at a Mercator projection chart or map of the land, this is how it's generated. Although the lines of longitude converge on the Earth towards the North Pole, they don't converge on a Mercator projection. They are parallel. It's very important to understand why this is beneficial to navigation, which I'll describe in a few moments. Another effect of the Mercator projection is the stretching of the lines of longitude outwards so that they become parallel. This also stretches the land as you proceed north. The further north you proceed on a Mercator projection, the more the land is stretched out to keep the lines of longitude parallel. Okay, I hope that's fairly straightforward. But the big question is, why do we use this type of projection for navigation? What's the advantage? To understand that, we need to look at two different types of lines that you can draw on the surface of the Earth. Of course, we draw lines on charts to represent directions we want to travel to get from our location to a destination. In a few moments, you'll understand why we draw them on Mercator projections. The first type of line we can draw on the surface of the Earth is called a great circle. If you recall from lesson one, a great circle on a chart is any line that divides the Earth into two hemispheres like this. The lines of longitude are great circles, but we can cut the Earth into hemispheres using lines in any other direction as well, like this. Great circles can go in any direction. They don't have to follow lines of longitude. They just have to split the Earth into two equal hemispheres. And a great circle also represents the most direct and shortest route you can follow to get from any one location on the Earth to another. It's the shortest distance between any two points on the Earth. A great circle may be the shortest distance between two points on the surface of the Earth, 
But there's a problem with trying to follow a great circle route to get from one location to another if you're using a magnetic compass to follow the route. Looking at a small section of the Earth, which is not a projection, which I've exaggerated here so you can better see the problem, the lines of longitude are converging towards the North Pole. If this is a great circle route on the surface of the Earth that you wish to follow from one location to another, then, because the lines of longitude converge towards the North or South Poles, your route crosses the lines of longitude at different angles as you progress on your trip. In other words, unless you're going due North or due South, the direction you need to follow for your trip is constantly changing with respect to true or magnetic North. You can't follow one direction all the way to complete your trip. Following one direction along the whole route will get you to the wrong location. To follow a great circle route for your trip, you have to constantly and continuously change the compass direction to stay on a great circle route. This was a big challenge for early mariners before Mercator invented his Mercator projection. So here's a Mercator projection on which all the locations and shorelines have been drawn, and the lines of longitude are all parallel. Now if we draw a line on a Mercator projection like this, the line you draw to plan your trip crosses all the lines of longitude at the same angle. All straight lines drawn on a Mercator projection are just one direction from the start to the end. Using a Mercator projection to plan your trip means you can draw a line from your location to your destination that follows a single direction along the entire line. You can then determine your compass course for this trip and then follow it all the way to get to your destination. A line that is a constant direction on the surface of the Earth is called a rum line. It isn't a great circle, so it makes for a slightly longer trip. But you can measure a compass direction for this leg of your trip and follow it the entire way to get where you're going. In the previous lesson on degrees true, magnetic, and compass, we drew a line on this chart to plot a course from the English Bay Bellboy to the entrance to Silva Bay on Gabriola Island. We drew this line on a Mercator projection, and that's why we can draw a line with a single direction from the start to the end of our trip. And that's it. That's why we use Mercator projections for navigation. It's so that we can draw a line on a chart to plan our trip, then measure the direction of the line in degrees true, then convert it to a compass direction, and then follow that one compass direction the whole way from start to end. For very long passages of maybe a thousand nautical miles or more, you can draw a great circle to make it the shortest distance. Then cut the trip up into smaller segments, maybe 200 mile legs between waypoints. Then follow a rum line from each waypoint to the next. So it'll be approximately a great circle route, but it'll consist of legs of rum line courses where you can set a single compass direction and stay on that course until you reach the next waypoint. Now, there is one minor snag to keep in mind when using a Mercator projection chart, and that is that although directions are preserved across the chart, distances are not. If you're going to use a pair of dividers to measure a distance on a chart, you can use the latitude divisions at the side of the chart like this, as I discussed in Lesson 1. But keep in mind that the distance of a nautical mile you set with your dividers at, for example, the bottom of the chart is not a nautical mile at the top of the chart. It's less than a nautical mile because the land is stretched towards the top of a Mercator projection. If you want to measure a distance at the top of the chart, use the latitude scale at the top of the chart. And if you want to measure a distance at the middle of the chart, then use the latitude scale at the middle of the chart. Okay, I have one last comment before the end of this lesson. When you see an inset on a chart, such as a close-up detail of a small harbor, this is likely to be a different type of projection than a Mercator projection. The projections for small harbor details tend to preserve distances instead of directions, since it's more important to estimate locations by your eye instead of by your compass. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear.